Welcome one and all to the Nationwide Prayer Campaign to End Abortion Forever. As you know, today we have Zach King and it's a Q&A um, session. So let's get started with the prayer and God bless you all. Thank you everybody for praying once again. And today we have Zachary King and we're just setting up right now. Um, we have questions that we have lined up for Zach to answer. And if you don't know who he is, he is the ex satanic wizard convert converted through a miraculous metal through the intercession of the blessed mother. And people still don't understand how powerful that is because uh, it, it is just astounding. They, they don't grasp what a big, incredible gift this was to the world because it changes the game of abortion. I mean, like it, it makes us see it for what it really is instead of the lies that have been taught to us through the media, through, you know, the abortion industry, he comes out and he tells us the truth. So I welcome you, Zach. One second, one second. Hi, Zach. How are you? Hey, how's it going? How are you doing? How are you doing? All right, it's a good day. Good. I heard that you had uh, many doctor's appointments today. Yeah, I did. It's been, uh, been a fun-filled day so far. Okay. Okay, well, I'm glad that you're here. I have some questions for you. Okay. Tell me I might have some answers. Okay, okay. Um, okay, for anybody listening out there, if you have a question, you could... You could type it into the live chat and we'll try to get to them if we get through all these questions. Here's the first question. Zach, for you personally, do you feel it is more important to spread the anti-abortion message or the anti-satanic one? That's, that's rough. Uh, they're pretty much equally important. If, if we were spreading the anti-satanic message, then if, if everybody embraced that we couldn't embrace anything satanic, then abortion would fall by the wayside. Because abortion is a satanic sacrifice. If we spread only not to do um, abortions, then we could still have Satanism. So I think it'd be more important to get rid of uh, satanic things because that would include abortion okay okay ha Zachary have you ever received visions or dreams I have but I, I really feel that they were more just for me oh okay it, it wasn't like you know here take this out to the masses it was more like you know here this is something you need to know Okay. Okay. So you have received them, but it's more a per of a personal nature. Right. Something not to be shared. Okay. Okay. Here's another one. Zachary, do you get lapses of guilt for all the abortions you conducted? When I first came into the church, like the very first like month that I was in the church, you know, I found out after I'd been Catholic for, I wasn't officially Catholic because I hadn't, you know, had confirmation yet, but I'd been in the church for a couple of days. I found out that I could go to a place called Adoration and I could see Jesus anytime I wanted. And I thought that there was like a sign up sheet or, you know, some kind of a long waiting list to get on that. And I found out, no, you know, there's nothing like that. You just go. And I was in shock that you could go see Jesus anytime you wanted and it wasn't at a football stadium. You know, there wasn't a waiting list and any of that. And I was spending 18 hours a day in front of Jesus. Wow. I, I would have spent more, but I had to work, you know, and I was telling Jesus I was sorry for probably the first, almost the first year I was in adoration. Wow. You know, I, I have a lot of things to be sorrowful for. 
and you know I felt that I could possibly make it up to him you know that if I brought if I brought more people to God than what I killed then that would be like the beginning of making it up to him mm. now I have found out that since then I have probably brought in more people to God than I killed. Mm. Wow, great. I, I had in 2017, I had a man call me and told me that he was, he was going through uh, RCIA and that his entire class, it was 45 people, were either his friends or his family that he had shown my videos to. And they all decided to go through RCIA at the same time. Oh, my Lord. That's beautiful. I thought so, too. I was like, God, <laughs> that's 45 people I need to get credit for. Yeah. yeah. He gets it, too. Right. So, okay. Okay. So you're saying for the whole year you were repenting before the Blessed Sacrament. 18 hours. Right. As, as often as I could, 18 hours, up to 18 hours a day. That's major. Okay. Um, here's another one. Do Satanists try to bring you back? And do do any of them ask, ask you why you left? On occasion, somebody asked me why I left. And even as of probably within the last three weeks, somebody called me to ask me, how do they contact Satan to get in? Wow. And I have that question usually about once a month. About once a month, somebody wants to know how to get in contact with the World Church of Satan or how to get in contact with the Illuminati. And sometimes somebody contacts me and says that they found the Illuminati online and they agreed to sell their soul to them. How do they get it back? Um, Usually it's not a lot of questions from Satanists about why I did what I did. Most people are wanting to become Satanists and they want to know how to get in. And I do on occasion have Satanists trying to get out, but I have more people that are questioning how to get into Satanism than Satanists trying to get out of it, so which you is a sad thing. So you try to divert the ones trying to get in? Yes, I do. I mean, I, I the last conversation I had with somebody, like I said, it was about three weeks ago. I asked him if he believed in God, and he said he wasn't sure. And I said, okay, then my challenge to you is, number one, to find proof that he does not exist. And number two, prove that Catholicism is not the one true faith. Mm. I said, and when you've proven both, call me back. Wow. Did he call? That was three weeks ago. He hasn't called me back yet. Which brings me to the next question. Are you persecuted for being a Catholic? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I catch help from all sides. Okay. I have uh, Catholics attack me for once being a Satanist. And, you know, how do, how do we know that I'm not trying to get Catholics into the dark world? Uh, Satanists attack me for being a bad Satanist. And Protestants attack me for being Catholic. Wow. Wow. Because I had someone call me busy as um, you've been to a couple of my events, John Leap's events. And they're like, right. why would you ask him? You know, why would you ask him to come on e either that way? Because you're they still believe that traces of Satanism is still left in you. Or I get Protestants saying that 
can you figure out why he went to Catholicism? I'm trying to make it look like, you know, we're not holy. Well, I had somebody ask me at one of my talks, how come I chose Catholicism? And I said, did you listen to my entire talk? Did you hear the whole thing? And he's like, yes. I said, okay, then you know that I didn't choose Catholicism. It chose me. I can't help but the Blessed Mother's Catholic. Mm. Okay. You know, if there's another church that helps promote Mary and has the miraculous medal in it and has adoration, I'd be there. Mm. You know, you tell me where the true presence of Jesus is, and that's where I'll go. Protestants, this is a challenge to you. Which one of your churches has the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ? You tell me that, and I'll go to that church. The Catholic Church. Catholic church. Surprise. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> you can't get anything better, bigger, more wonderful. You know, when, when I was at, when I spoke at the NACOM, it's the North American Committee on Divine Mercy. It's put on by the National Shrine of Divine Mercy. They usually do the NACOM and then they follow it up with uh, Divine Mercy Sunday. So you have like two events in the same year. And I spoke at the NACOM in 2015. And while I was there, one of the organizers said that they had a woman ask them, how do you know? that he's not a, still a Satanist trying to recruit Catholics into the dark world. And the priest told her that if he's still a Satanist, he's doing a bad job. It's like he tells everybody to go to confession every seven days. Mm. And if you don't need confession every seven days, go and get a blessing because everybody needs a blessing. That everybody should be praying and fasting on a regular basis that everybody needs to go to adoration every day. Everybody needs to go to mass every day. Everybody needs to take the Eucharist, but only in a state of grace. Mm. He's like, what kind of a Satanist would tell people to do that? I, that's, that's exactly right. And, and you know, as a side note, I was just thinking about this other day. You know, Catholics in the Philippines, I don't know about other countries, but there's a custom before children leave the home, the adults bless them on the head. So that's what the domestic church can do. And there's strength in that. What do you think of that, Zach? It's pretty awesome. It is. And everybody takes for granted that little act of holiness because everybody does it, but there's power behind it. So how many, how many accidents were pre prevented near misses, you know, because of that little right. sign? Yes. So going on, this is a good one. Did you feel love as a Satanist? I thought I did, but I didn't realize that what I was feeling wasn't love until I became a Catholic. Oh. So what and do you I define was, it as? I, I was married once as a Satanist. Well, actually, I was married twice as a Satanist. Um, I was in organized Satanism for the first time, and the second time I was out of it but I was still a Satanist. Um, I think it was the second time around was pretty much as close to being love as you could have. It was like the first time it was extreme lust. Mm. And the second time it was probably extreme like. Mm. You know, it wasn't quite love. You know, and when I became Catholic, I realized, oh, what I had before wasn't love. I, I know in my own life, having um, depression, I couldn't love. In mortal, the mortal sin kind of depression, not the, not the hormonal or psychological. This was the, the sickness of the soul. I could, there was no room for love. That's all, that's all I know. I, I couldn't have any love in me. 
Well, when when you're trying to embrace darkness, there's no room for light. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no room for God if you're trying to embrace Satan. Right. But it's it's amazing though that just the a little tiny amount of God can totally chase away the most, you know, the biggest part of the devil. Amen. Amen. You know, and the devil is not even close to the strength of God. Yeah. You know, for people that are embracing darkness, you know, just a tiny glimmer of light will chase them away. So true. You know, he, he uses fear and intimidation tactics, but God does not fear him. You know, so many people don't get this example, but so many people worship the cabinet and not the cabinet maker. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the cabinet can't do anything to the cabinet maker. The cabinet maker can make him prettier or destroy him. He can make the cabinet and set it in a corner and never use it. Or we can make it the most important piece of furniture in the room. But no matter what he does, it's his choice. Mm -hmm. You know, Satan, there's Satan over there is the cabinet thinking you should all be looking at me. Right. Right. You know, God decides what's going to happen to each piece of furniture, not the furniture. Yes. So, um, so uh, the next question. Yep. I, su I suspect there may be a spell on me. What should I do? What are you using to determine that? No, that's a question that I was sent. That was sent to me. Right, but how does the person determine that? How oh, do I they know that? Hmm. Um, I would, I would encourage that person to call me, so we can walk through that, walk through that process. Um, the easiest thing to do is to make sure you're in a state of grace. Mm -hmm. There is one spell that if that spell has been done to you. Getting into a state of grace would eliminate the spell and the curse. It's called the line of sight curse. Um, so confession gets you back into a state of grace and that eliminates the curse. Mm. So confession, if, confession. Right. If that's not the case, then there's a type of ritual you can do that involves prayer and fasting. But I just had to explain this to somebody today where you can find out if you're under a curse. Okay. It, it's a way to determine whether you're cursed. Um, but you might end up needing a deliverance. What's your email again, Zach? Mysticforgod at yahoo.com. Mysticforgod at yahoo.com. If you, if you believe that you have a spell on you, ask Zach. He, he could... He could, it's like you have to go through the history, right? And ask some questions. Right, right. There's okay. a lot of questions involved. Okay. And then but there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people that believe that they're cursed when they're not. Right, right, right. You know, there's a lot of people that have just seen a lot of scary movies and have seen how things are done in movies and think that's real life. Okay. And it's usually not that case. I, I will also say that it's been my experience that people that are schizophrenic want to be possessed and people that are possessed want to be mentally ill. Hmm. Wow. That's a lot to think about. It, it's uh, my job is not an easy one. Hmm. And these are things that I have to deal with almost every day. Right, right. Right. Okay. Are you ready for the next one? Yep. What are the red flags to be alarmed about 
that our kids may be dabbling into Satanism. I would say one of the biggest telltale signs is the music they listen to. Music. And then everything else is an offshoot from there. You know, you'd want to pay attention to the books they're looking at or reading, the movies they're seeing, um, jewelry they wear, posters on their walls, bumper stickers on their cars. And there's a lot of bumper stickers that people have on that are very esoteric and you look at them and you, you know they mean something, but you're not sure what. And there's, there's a specialty bumper sticker is fairly large. It usually goes in the back window of a car or truck and it's from Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people have no idea what it means. They don't realize it's a Harry Potter symbol. And for those of you that think Harry Potter is simple and and uh, it just came from the mind of a woman. Uh, that woman, J.K. Rowling's, asked through automatic writing to become possessed so she could write a hit series. And she was possessed by six demons who helped write Harry Potter. Wow. So it's not that innocent of a book after all. Is that inside information or is that something that she publicly shares? No, that was fair, shared by Father Chad Ripperger, wow. an exorcist. Mm. He shared that I was speaking at a spiritual warfare conference on the Terry and Jesse show in 2016. And one of the people there, I think his name was Father Bob. He has a deliverance ministry and he helped Father Ripperger do some of his exorcisms. And he told that story at the Terry and Jesse show. Right. Um, you know, the, the music your kids listen to, although it might sound innocent and lighthearted, read the lyrics. You know, there's a lot of songs that are highly satanic and we don't realize it. Or sometimes the artist is highly satanic and we don't realize it. Mm. You know, Katy Perry, Katy Perry, you know, she's a pretty girl and she has a lot of happy, fun songs. But she said in an interview that she wanted to be the next Amy Grant, but she failed. So she sold her soul to the devil. You can look that on an interview up on YouTube. It's there. It's in her, her own mouth. The camera's on her when she says it. I'm just wondering just why wondering they wouldn't why want to conceal that. They're told not to. It's the deal you sign. Oh, okay. whatever, whatever it is you do. People see how successful she is and that she got this successful by selling her soul to the devil. So now other people know they can do the same thing. Hmm. Okay. All right. I get it. Okay. So, um, can I give you the next question? Oh, by the way, as, as follow up also to this question I just answered. Uh -huh. A lot of a lot of parents are in a panic because they see the Satanic Bible or um, a book by Ant or by um, oh what's his name Aleister Crowley. Aleister Crowley is more serious than Anton Lavey. Most saint Satanists think that Anton Lavey is a joke. Um, uh, they don't take his book seriously, and a lot of people that read the Satanic Bible end up converting to Christianity because they want to read the real Bible to see how it compares. And when they start reading the real Bible, they convert. Right, right. right. Wow. wow. God will use so, anything, right? Seeing, seeing your child read Anton LaVey's The Satanic Bible is not a reason to panic. I mean, just continue praying for your child. But seeing them read... Alistair Crowley, that's a little more serious. Hmm. Okay. Um, next question. Zach, when were you most scared and frightened in your lifetime? Hmm. This, this wasn't really the most scared I ever was, but this was kind of scary to me. 
I was at a satanic conference and I levitated above the stage and I was expecting to just go up about 10 feet and I went up probably about 150 feet and realized that if they drop me right now, I'm going to die. Wow. And I was, I was terrified and I wanted to come down, but I didn't want to appear that I was scared. Wow. Well, that, that, that was a pretty scary moment. I would be scared of that. Oh, wow. Um, also not, not necessarily a scary moment, but um, a very sad moment was the day before I lost my foot. You know, the day they told me that I had gangrene in my foot and I had to have it cut off. It wasn't scary. It was just trying to wrap my brain around that, you know, I've had my foot for 54 years and now I'm going to lose it. Yeah. It wasn't very happy. It was worse the day before I lost it was worse than the day I lost it. The day I lost it, I'd resigned myself to losing it. Wow. And I'm sure you offer that up. Oh, man, I offer up everything in my life. I would be bringing in tons of souls to God. Praise God. Uh, so, so many, so much stuff that happens to me. Yeah. You know, I, I've, I've heard about nursing homes having so much wasted suffering. You know, and I'm thinking, not me. I'm not wasting any of this. Praise be Jesus. You know, the, the only thing that, that slightly has me saddened is that the, the person that dates me has to give up a lot. You know, you have to want to be my caretaker and not just my girlfriend, you know, not just my wife. You know, I got a lot of things wrong. And unfortunately, that means I'm in dialysis, I'm blind. You know, I still like to have fun, but I feel like I'm a burden on people that have to take care of me. Mm. And I don't want to be a burden to them. I want, you know, I still want to be able to go out just like, you know, my friends do that don't have vision problems or don't have dialysis every two days, you know, that want to have a good time. I still want to have a good time. You know, I just don't want to drag my friends down while I'm trying to lift them up. Yeah. That's terrible. Well, we'll just keep on praying for you. Um, there's, there's got, there's got to be somebody out there that thinks that I would be fun. There is. God has a plan. God has a great plan. I have one more question, and then I want to open it up for something else, if you don't mind. Sure. Um, the last question is, why do you think women choose abortion rather than opting to give up their baby, baby for adoption? I think that I, in some cases... We have taught people that even if you give up the baby for adoption, you're still ruining your life by having the baby. Hmm. You know, people are still going to judge you because you decided to, you know, either have a baby and you're not married, but you know, you're still having it or you're going to ruin your figure. Or you gave up on the baby, so clearly you didn't love it. So now you have the stigma of, it's not that you're no longer a mother. You're a mother, but you don't have your child. Mm -hmm. You know, we can attach all types of stigmas to these things. You know, we can try and make that person feel mentally ill or not adequate, not good enough to have a child. Uh, you had a child, now look at your baby, you ruined your body. You know, we keep coming up with all these things, you know, and we're not looking at the positives. You brought life into this world. Right, right. You're you right. accomplished something that no man can do. Right. right. You know, and unless God wanted you to be pregnant, you wouldn't be. Right. You know, the gift of life is an amazing thing. You know, I'm 54 years old. Uh, my friend John has, has 
uh, six kids with Jennifer and two kids from a previous marriage, he's brought eight kids into the world. I am not old enough. I'm not, I'm too old to get eight kids now, but I would love to try for that. Or, you know, like Jennifer has 12 kids and one adopted. Mm-hmm. I would love to have 12 kids. Now, I would love to bring in that many kids into the world. Yeah, they bring joy. A, a chance at raising 12 saints. You know, my, my friend, Sister Purity, she's got 13 kids in her family. She's a nun. Her brother, Christopher, is going to, um, he's going to become a priest. Another one of his brothers is going to become a priest. And I think one of their other younger brothers is going to become a priest. One of their older brothers is open to the priesthood, but doesn't quite feel called to it right now. And then some of their female siblings are thinking about becoming nuns Mm -hmm. right now. I'm I'm not going to say that all of them are going to become priests and nuns, but right now there's a possibility that the entire family is going to be priests and nuns. And I told Sister Purity recently when we spoke that their parents would definitely be saints if all of them became priests and nuns. That would just be incredible. There's 13 of them. Imagine how many lives they could touch. Yeah. Yeah. And their their convent, I don't remember the, the name of it, but I think it was started by St. Pope John Paul II. Mm. And wow. they have a, a huge devotion to him. Uh, yes. Wow, that's a really great way of looking at it. You have the opportunity to bring your children into sainthood. I think everybody should think that way. That's extremely positive, you know. Someone's asking, why don't you show your face while talking? Um, Zach has been through many appointments today, many doctors, and um, he couldn't get to a computer. So that's the bottom line. Yeah, so you guys have me on a headset and a phone. Yeah. So... Now, he, this is the, the, a quick um, thing I wanted to talk about. Since you know a, a lot of these things that have been happening, because you were in meetings that were privy to only select few, um, with, with the atmosphere that's going on, the political atmosphere, a lot of things, a lot of people think that it's gonna be revved up, revved up. I mean, all hell will break loose very soon, coming close to the election. What do you think is gonna happen then? I'm not sure. I mean, the the Democrats are starting to, every every time Trump opens his mouth, they try and twist it. And what, what he means is this, or what he's really doing is this. You know, it, it's, they try and tell us what he's really saying or what he's really doing. And he can't sneeze without him being coming under fire for something. You know, or they say that Trump said this 20 years ago. It's like, really? I'm sure you have proof of that, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like everything he says and does is the wrong thing or a bad thing. You know, even, you know, he's trying to come out with a, uh, um, you know, a cure for the coronavirus, and they're warning people not to take it. Right. right. You know, so I'm certain, I guess it depends on who wins the election. I would think if Trump doesn't win, it's the beginning of the end for us. Yeah. Have you noticed? If Trump Trump does win, it will be four more years of attacks on Trump. Well, have you noticed that the the closer we come to the election, 
there's there's all this violence and confusion and all that, the rioting and, you know. But have you noticed that the pro-life issue has been so brought up to the limelight like never before? I think the Holy Spirit is, uh, I think the Holy Spirit is like uh, kind of prodding souls to see this is a question of life or death. Yeah, but it wasn't an issue until Trump was president. And Trump's the first president to, to promote the March for Life in Washington. Every other president has been president, but we had the Marches for Life. No one ever talked about it. No one ever mentioned it. No one ever hinted about it. And suddenly Trump talks about it. But he mentions it between a certain date, between like his inauguration and the, the March for Life, he mentioned it like 162 times. Wow. So, something insane. Yeah. Like he mentions it more than any other president ever has. And then he actually does a talk for the March for Life. Praise God. Praise God. You know, he said he's trying to be the most pro-life president we've ever had. And so far he is. Yes. I'm grateful for that. It clearly defines what, what he's all about. You know, we got him. He got elected in the Jubilee year for mercy. Yeah. You know, we oftentimes get what we deserve. We got Barack Obama because that's what we deserve. Yeah. You know, he was the most abortion-friendly president we've ever had. We were blessed. We It was out of mercy that we were able to get someone who embraces life. And his first executive order was immediate. And it was to stop, I think it was $500 million from going to abortion and contraception in other countries. So that was the first thing that he did. And I, I'm grateful for that because, you know, we're, it's bad enough that we're in trouble and we have culpability for our own sins of death and murder. How much more for the people outside our country? So at least that was eliminated, you know? I just think that the message should be this. Expect this. Expect the worst. They're going to let out all their true colors. They're going to get desperate, loud, scary, hairy. Remain calm. Receive the strength that God will give you. And do not be moved by all of this. Just believe and know that we have an incredible God. And we will triumph. We just need to keep on doing what we're doing. Keep praying fast give up something that you want daily yeah one of the um i was talking about this earlier today with the same person about the curses um fasting is not always giving up food right you know there are people that are addicted to their social media when they wake up in the morning they've got to check snapchat facebook instagram you know, whatever the, all the media outlets are, they check everything even before their feet touch the floor. So instead, when you get up, you can still check all your media. But wait three hours before you do it. What's going to change on your social media if you checked it at 6 a.m. versus 9 a.m.? Right, right. You know, so just, you know, or you roll out of bed and you light up a cigarette, or how about you let roll out of bed and don't light up the cigarette right off the bat? You can still have your 20, 20 cigarettes in a day, but you're going to start later than what you normally do. Right. You know, or this is my personal favorite. I'm diabetic, so I have to eat sugar-free stuff. My favorite diabetic thing is sugar-free butterscotch pudding. It's amazing. I can easily make a double batch of that 
and probably eat almost all of that container in one sitting. So instead of doing that, put it in a plastic bowl, get a lid that fits it, then take one tablespoon, dip that in there one time, whatever you can fit on that one spoon that one time, that's what you can have today. When you're done with that spoon, put it in the sink with the lid on it, put it in the fridge. You know when you can have more? Tomorrow, when you do it again. Yeah. I think you're still fasting. You're still getting, you're getting exactly what you want. You just can't have it all at once. Yeah. You know, or like if Snicker bar is your favorite candy bar, you know, go get a bag of fun size bars. Now, I must disagree. You know, that little tiny bar, that's not the fun size. The giant size, that's the fun size. <laughs> but take that small bar, cut it up into three pieces. You know, you could easily plow through that bag in one sitting. Instead, that little bar is going to last you three days. And every time you take a bite of it, you pray out loud that you're offering it, you're fasting for this particular cause. Right. If you are under spiritual attack of some kind for a particular cause, and you tell the powers that be out loud that you're fasting for this purpose, they will attack you if they're attacking you for this other thing. It's the easiest way to find out if you're in spiritual warfare. Demons are creatures of habit. If you are attacking them for a particular cause, and they are attacking you for that cause, they'll attack you even harder if you're fasting against them. Right. If you find out that you're under attack by them for this cause, this allows you to go head to head against the devil. Now, some people may not want to do that, and some people may want to ask their priest, can I do this? And your priest may tell you no. You may have so much stuff on your plate that it's not a good idea for you to do that. But if you don't have too much stuff on your plate, and you got time and the courage to do it, I encourage it. Remember, I was a victim of bullying as a child. Not hitting the bully back does not stop him from hitting you. He's already hitting you. You might as well hit back. Yeah. Well, I think um, the thing about fasting is just about disciplining yourself. You have to be able to withdraw and detach from any of your worldly likes just at a snap of a finger. That, that makes you strong. When you say yes to yourself all the time, you can, you can't be strong. There's no way you could be strong. You get addicted to things easily. We need to we need to be disciplined because we're soldiers, you know. We won't be held back when the Lord asks us to do something on the spot. But anyway, we got to get going now. Zach, is there any uh, last things you want to add? Before closing, uh, by the, 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 the person that wondered why I'm not showing my face, if you go online, I've got a lot of interviews, a lot of videos I've made, so you can see what it does it look like. But you'll notice once you see my face that you're not missing much. I'm not Stop seeing. Stop it! Stop it! If you go to <laughs> allthingsministry.org and you can go to his. Um, uh, uh, website or you you have a lot of videos too you have a lot of uh, uh youtube videos and they're interesting to watch uh he he ca he gets a lot of um info in there so if you're interested on watching go go ahead and look him up zachary king allsaintsministry.org so zach thank you so much we'll see you next week yep you take care everybody pray for thank zach you. Please Thank don't you. forget to keep him in your prayers. Thank you so much, Zach. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hi, my name is Karen Jefferson from John Leaves Evangelization. We've been doing this live stream to stop abortion since May 13th, 2020. And we try to do prayers each day, every day with speakers. If you would like to donate to this worthy cause to stop abortion, 
something that is righteous in the eyes of God, please donate to us at johnleaps.com, johnleaps, L-E-A-P-S dot com, or call 800-313-6933. We could really use it, and we thank you very much. God bless you all.